Critical Drinker. Yeah, I hate this dude. I hate his uh, criticisms. I think they usually suck. I do watch his shit, so I guess I can't complain about his popularity because I do click on his videos sometimes. And you know, to be perfectly 100% honest, occasionally he will make a point. And I'll be like, I actually agree with that. But 90% is literally just him pointing at stuff he doesn't like and just saying woke and then money falling into his lap. But he says it in a funny voice. So this is called Why Modern Movies Suck. They Hate Men, Part 1. Here you go. Men, don't you just hate them all? Eh, like 95%. 98, 90, 95, 98. Well, if you happen to be a creative working in Hollywood today, then the answer is probably yes. I, well, what I've learned is I need to be a creative working in Hollywood today. <laughs> Let them know that I'm willing to go along with their regressive anti-man agenda. Either because you genuinely believe it, or because you think it's what you're expected to say these days just to get hired. I'm always willing to admit that what I say here could be, in fact, mistaken, but... I'm pretty willing to bet that hating men is not a prerequisite for getting a job in Hollywood. I, I, I get what you're going for here, but like, don't you see how this is just the inverse of what Anita Sarkeesian was doing a few years back, except for it's actually popular? Because when a bunch of women were being like, man, media doesn't like us. Look at how women are depicted in these video games. That's so horrible. You guys were like, bunch of whiners. But now you make the exact same videos Hollywood hates men. And people are like, yep, best, best, best. You guys are just Anita Sarkeesian. But whatever the reason, there's been a bit of a change in the past few years in how men are portrayed on screen. And Why are you showing a bunch of movies that are from when men were still awesome on screen then? The dude in the crow wears makeup, so maybe that, that like scares you off. You're like, no makeup, mate. Too f***ing gay for me. Um flaming heterosexual what I am. <laughs> That's gonna be my impression of you throughout this video. I'm not an impressionist. Don't let the fact he's wearing makeup fool you, man. He's, he's pretty badass. He kills a lot of people. And here's a hint. It hasn't been a good one. Hard as it may be to believe now, there was a time when we were practically spoiled for choice when it came to cool, awesome, aspirational male heroes on the big and the small screen. Didn't you just, did you just show a clip of Deadpool? You realize that's like a modern movie, right? What small of a time period are we zeroing in on here? There was no positive movies about men released last week. What the hell's going on in this world, <laughs> Gubna? Uh. But they were scrappy underdogs who had to rise to the challenge, or brave adventurers risking life and limb for fortune and glory, or hard-bitten cops taking on the criminal underbelly of society. They were a whole generation- Yeah, none of those are good role models, by the way. <laughs> a crooked cop, a guy that steals treasures from other countries, and, um, what was the first one? I don't know, probably a rapist or something, knowing you're- Ass. ...of men who kicked ass, triumphed against the odds, and saved the day, and usually look pretty- Man, I- yeah, they don't make them like that anymore. When's the last time you guys saw a movie about a dude that triumphed over the odds and saved the day? Uh, hold on, let me just, uh, really quickly, let's just go to- to illustrate the point being made here. Top Gun Maverick, uh, yeah, hmm. That's about a- that's about a dude that, uh, defies odds and saves the day, I think, actually. So that one's not a good example, but, uh, Doctor Strange- oh! That's where a guy faces overwhelming odds and then saves the whole multiverse. So, yeah, oops. Well, um, Avatar The Way of Water. Oh, damn. Mm, Jurassic World Dominion. F oops. Uh, the Batman. Ooh, f Thor Love and Thunder. Ah, ooh, e. Spider Man. No Way Home. Sonic the Hedgehog 2. Black Adam. I mean, come on. That's still like most movies are still about that. You fucking lot. Like, how? F God damn it, dude. I. Critical drinker. Teach me your ways, dude. This is a message directly to the critical drinker right now. You, I'm most of what I do here on this channel. I'm doing for the audience, right? I don't care. I don't actually care about these people. I'm responding to. They're beneath me. I don't give a shit about them. But critical drinker, tell me when you make content that you know is stupid, and you know that you're just making it to appease idiots, how do you silence that little voice in the back of your head that says like, you're a piece of shit. Why are you doing this, Bobby? Why are you such a piece of shit, Bobby? I'm assuming your name is Bobby. Uh, I've just, I've decided that. Uh, how do you suppress that little voice? Cause man, <sighs> you are cleaning up with this griff, bro. I don't know. Just lie to him. Just be like, yeah, there's no pictures about heroic men saving the day anymore. 
I mean, except, you know, most movies. <laughs> but, you know, you know. Very cool doing it. That time, however, has passed, and the once mighty list of male cinematic heroes has dwindled to just a handful of aging characters. Did we just show a Nazi soldier as one of the heroes there? <laughs> uh, I don't know. I don't know what that was from. Maybe the context vindicates it. I don't know. ...living on borrowed time before they're ultimately recast, rebooted, or remade for... Well, what did you expect? Did you expect Tobey Maguire was gonna f***ing play Spider-Man forever? You know, he thought he was just gonna play Spider-Man from now until the end of time, until he's 900 years old? Yeah, they're gonna get recast at some point. Spider-Man is not exactly a f***ing old man role. Modern audience... Can we stop with this girl? Can we stop? Because first of all, she was actually right. Like, no matter what side of the political spectrum you were on, screaming in that moment was actually super appropriate. The rest of us were just behind the times. We didn't realize what we were in for. NCs. The traditional heroic male lead that was pretty much the bedrock foundation of cinema for almost a hundred years is apparently no longer a viable commodity in- Top Gun Maverick was the f top grossing movie of 2022. Top Gun Maverick was the top grossing movie of 2022. Black Panther, Wakanda, wherever, would have very much starred a dude if not for the fact that the dude playing him died. Otherwise, that would have been another male superhero-led movie. Probably would have been better, bigger box office, too. Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness, male-led movie. Yeah, is there, like, a, a boring, generic POC girl that's thrown in? To like be like, wow, how progressive? Yes. Does she leave any impression or impact whatsoever? No. The movie is called Doctor Strange. It is about Doctor Strange. He is the one that is fascinating. Avatar, The Way of Water. No characters are actually interesting in that, but the main hero is like Jake Sully, right? I guess he now has his family and some of them are girls. So maybe that does that dilute it for you? I don't know. You know, there have always been females that worked alongside male heroes, so I don't know how that would invalidate anything. Jurassic World Dominion, I've never seen it, but I'm pretty sure it's about a, do a, bu a bunch of mostly men saving the world against impossible odds. Uh, then you have Minions, The Rise of Gru. No idea what the plot of that is. Then The Batman is literally a movie about a billionaire who's like, crime is out of control, puts on a bat suit and goes and beats the shit out of people. That's not masculine enough for you anymore Thor Love and Thunder I know you guys didn't like it but it's still a movie about a big muscle bound dude saving the day Spider-Man No Way Home not a big muscle bound dude but still a dude saving the goddamn day against impossible odds and they brought back that Spider-Man that you like so much Sonic the Hedgehog 2 male hedgehog saves the day Black Adam saves the day Elvis well, he didn't really save the day. <laughs> so, you know, but like still most, almost all of the top grossing movies of last year prove that everything you're already saying in this video at a minute and 13 seconds in is wrong. Now you might like those movies or you might not like those movies, but I don't care either way. The fact remains those movies all have male leads facing impossible odds and saving the goddamn day. So what, kindly sir, are you fucking talking about? In entertainment today, they're too dated, too toxic, too dangerous to put into the limelight. Uh -huh. And so they've been replaced with more acceptable alternatives. Wait, you're really going to tell me that you feel like Robert Pattinson's Batman was like too wussy for you or whatever? Like <laughs> he was like if anything, the most violent and devoted to violence of all the Batman that we've seen before. Batman, is that how you say that? All the other Batmans? How do you pluralize that? All the other actors that played Batman. <laughs> That's how we'll do it. All the other actors that played Batman also kind of played Bruce Wayne a little bit. It's like, yeah, Bruce Wayne, it might be his cover, but he's a party animal. Robert Pattinson didn't even do that. He's just like, no, I'm Batman 24-7. Even when I'm Bruce Wayne, I'm Batman. I mean, like, his whole thing is, like, he says he's vengeance and beats the crap out of people. Like, how are you basically just saying, like, you don't like him because once upon a time he played some foo-foo vampire in a goddamn terrible movie that left really not much of a cultural impact and who he himself hated? Like, Robert Pattinson doesn't even like that goddamn shit. He just took it because it was money. Timothy Chalamet there, he fucking killed it as Paul Atreides. What the hell are you talking about? And that middle guy, I don't even know who the fuck that is. Don't believe me? 
Okay, go turn on your TV and watch basically any commercial break that comes up in the next hour or so. Tell me, how many dumb, hapless, incompetent husbands- Are we really doing this? <laughs> you have any idea how many f You know, whatever happened to the, the day and the age when men could look at unflattering depictions of other men and not be so goddamn whiny about it? Homer Simpson was a, was a, a guy. He's a dumbass. And he's always wrong. And he's always getting into some stupid, zany antic. But we used to just be like, ha, that's pretty funny, man. There's a little bit of that Homer Simpson in all of us, if you really think about it. We all got our dumbass side, you know, and laugh it off. But now it's got it. Now we're like, <laughs> men are all portrayed as bumbling idiots. It's like, no, they're not. Sometimes they are. Sometimes they aren't. That's how it's always been. Let's be honest here. Your complaint is really not that men are now always being portrayed as bumbling idiots. Your complaint is that women aren't always being portrayed as that, right? For a lot of cinematic history, women, you know, they had a few little shining moments here and there, but they were kind of sidelined and now they're not sidelined anymore. Now you, you, sometimes you see competent, decisive male characters and sometimes you see wimpy male characters and that's always been the case, but what used to also be the case is almost all the time the woman is just like the eye candy or she's just there to like be a, in a support role. But now the movies are portraying her as like an equal to the man and that makes your little caveman brain mad. It doesn't, well, no. Let me be more clear. That makes your little grifter brain light up. Hey, I bet a bunch of these caveman brains out there would love it if I were to actually use my better, not great, but better than their intelligence to articulate the things they're feeling better than they can so that they will give me money. That's where you're at. And it's just like, once again, where's that little voice in your head that's like, don't do it, Bobby. No, there's a better way. You don't have to placate the stupids. You don't have to make that grifting money. Let, the, let their stupid ideas wither and die on the vine. Don't take a monetary incentive to bolster their stupid thoughts. Don't do it, Bobby. How do you ignore that voice? You realize you're making the world a worse place, right? You, what you are is an umbrella holder for chuds. When the rain of reality starts to rain on the chuds, you're the guy that extends the umbrella over their heads so that they don't have to feel that cold drip of reality hitting them in the damn face. And for that job, you get tips. They, they slide some money into your pocket here and there, and it's enough for you to go, wow, I got all kinds of money now. Wow, I'm so influential. I'm so powerful. You're influential and powerful among morons who believe nonsense. And that's not an opinion. It's a fact that they believe nonsense. Because once again, the entire contention of this video, the, the foundation of it is flawed. You've already just laid out a fucking false premise, so anything that follows it is inevitably and invariably gonna be dog shit. You suck. Critical drinker, I'm sorry, but you fucking suck, bro. You're not good. You don't make good videos, you just make videos that are accessible to a large demographic of really stupid people, and that's nothing to be proud of. You should, in fact, be ashamed for doing that. Fathers and boyfriends, do you see constantly screwing up even the most? I don't know. I don't sit around watching commercials all day analyzing them, Anita. Okay? I'm not saying, well, what message is this sending to the country? It's sending the message buy weed killer, buy this dumb f overpriced car, you know, buy this dumb TV system, eat this food, you know? Like, that's what it's telling you. At the end of the day, that's what the message that's being sent simple household tasks and needing someone more diverse to bail them out. Go ahead, I'll wait. Now, this is a trend. No person is diverse. What do you mean someone more diverse? That doesn't, that literally doesn't even make sense as a sentence. You just mean someone who's not a white dude. That's not diverse. That's just a person who doesn't happen to be a white man, dude. What kind of crack are you smoking, bro? Do you literally look at black people and be like, oh, look at them diverses over there. How long is it before you just come out as gay and admit that you don't like anybody but white men? Gonna fucking be like, this bed is getting a little too woke for me with all this woman in it. Where's that, where's that dude? I need a dude in this bed. Yeah, now this bed is cool and masculine. <laughs>
trend that I've noticed creeping into films and TV for quite some time now. TJ, why is the stream unlisted? Because this is for patrons only, bro. I think the problem comes in a number of different flavors, or tropes if you will. So let's take some time to look at each one in turn. And this is going to be a pretty big topic, so I'll probably have to make this video a two-parter. Yay, two parts. <laughs> This, this turd is gonna be real long, y'all. This is gonna take two sh to sh out this turd, it will. Couldn't you just make it longer? Couldn't you just like not put it out until you're actually finished with it and then it could just be one part and we don't have to sit through two of these? <laughs> to give each one the attention it deserves. Unbelief. TJ, why are you making money? Because I'm a fool. Me, they're gonna get pl By the way, dude, if Mark Hamill looking, I mean, does Mark Hamill here look any manlier than goddamn Timothy Chalamet? I and mean, looks significantly less manly than Robert Pattinson, actually. But this is like, oh man, what an iconic hero. He's basically just been grandfathered in. They don't care that he looks like a little twerp because, oh man, that was the little twerp I rooted for when I was a kid growing up in that Star Wars household. Plenty of my attention. Anyway, strap in, dear viewer, as I take you through the tropes of modern male characters. All right. This is going to be fun. Trope number one, the death of the stoic man. Pick out any random selection of mainstream movies that are more than 10 or 15 years old and give them a watch. Now pay particular attention to the men in those movies. Watch how they act, how they communicate with each other, the pace and tone and tempo of their conversations. Uh -huh. Watch how they carry themselves. Oh my god, you guys. 15 years ago, cinematic conventions are different than they are today. Whoa, what a mind-blowing concept, bro. The way women talk to each other is different. The way scenes are shot is different. Literally everything about movies now is different than movies 15, 20 years ago. That would be true for any two decades. Movie, You look at movies, listen how they talked in movies in the 50s. Listen how they talked in movies in the 70s. Listen to movies how they talked in the 90s. Listen to movies how they talk now. There's always going to be a profound difference after two fucking decades of cinematic convention has passed on by. Like, yeah, man, movies have changed in the last 15 years. Like, no shit. Prove that it's bad. Prove that it's wrong. Prove that it's doing harm. Prove that it's anything other than just a gripe of yours. Just start phrasing it like that. Hey, guys. I don't, I like the way they used to do movies. I don't like this new way. If you just were honest and just said it that way, I wouldn't have no problem with this, but instead it has to be like, there's a decline in the Hollywood system that brainwashing us to hate men. And there's no more positive role models for men no more. Look at how men used to talk in movies and now they talk like a bunch of pussies, mate. Oh no. Bell to work. Too stupid, too much women's. Think about the subtle shifts of power and dominance as their scenes progress. The use of pauses and facial expressions and eye contact to clue. Notice how vague this fucking is. Like, show me a specific example of what you're talking about then. Why is it all just this vague, like, notice the use of things that I know exist in movies. Notice how they are shot. Notice how the characters are shot. Notice how the characters talk. It's like you don't actually give any examples of any of this. You just vaguely allude to it and then people's minds fill in the blanks paint by numbers youtube video Put the audience in on who's dictating the pace of the conversation do this and you'll probably begin to pick up on a few things why don't you pick up on it you're supposed to be the film critic right why don't you give me an example of what the you're talking about so we can actually discuss it instead of just vaguely gesturing to like man things used to be shot different characters used to talk different like the fact that men in older movies are generally able to convey a lot more by saying less. That's so fucking vague. What are you talking about? Show me something. Show me a scene that demonstrates what you're talking about, and then show me another scene that fails to do that same thing, and be like, here's why this is better than this. That would be what an actual fucking movie critic would do, right? But you're not one, are you? You're just a right-wing grifter with a thin veneer of a movie critic painted onto him who just sits here and lies to people, but because you're telling a certain segment of the population the lies they want to hear, they'll eat it up by the fucking truckload and just go, yes, master. Blah, 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 blah. So corny, so shameful, so shitty, so dishonest, so scummy. Fuck you, you shitbag. I will fucking... <laughs> mm hmm hmm
Yes. They're generally more reserved and project a kind of quiet confidence. They're less prone to big emotional outbursts. Does anyone find it ironic that this uh, spiel about like the stoic man who doesn't feel the need to talk is being brought to you by a bloviating nitwit? Like a guy who can't stop talking? I mean, I, look, I am that too. You can't avoid it in this field, right? You make a, you, you, you're a YouTube commentator. You're, you love to talk. Like this guy's full of opinions. This guy loves to talk. So he doesn't exemplify this. This to him is just some cinematic convention. This has nothing to do with his personal identity as a dude. He's not stoic. He's not quiet. He's a loudmouth. He's a jabbering loudmouth, just like me. Or energetic displays of high-strung verbal diarrhea. They spend. That's us, guy. You can't, dude. How are you going to claim this is an assault on your person when you know for a fact that you're a blabbermouth and so am I and neither of us is remotely stoic? You know that. So why are you Oh no. Whatever happened to the stoic male? <laughs> and less time talking about themselves and how things make them feel and more time Footing too much feelings going on in movies nowadays, you ask me. Was it back in the day, man used to shoot another man on the screen and he didn't f***ing, didn't mind it, never. Now he's got to go to counselling. Now he's got to be all concerned, like, what about that man's family? What about his pets? What about his kids? What about his wife? Oh, cry me a f***ing river with your f***ing emotions, mate. I like when human beings are wantonly slaughtered on the screen. With no concern, men of action. I'm grappling with whatever problem or issue is actually at hand. When they decide to show aggression, it's generally controlled and carefully measured and deployed at just the right moment for maximum impact. They're um, no. If you go to any time in cinematic history, uh, you will find characters that are hotheads that cannot control their anger, that are just like fly off the handle over anything. And you will find characters that are exactly like he described, the cool guy that, you know, he does show aggression, but it's very controlled. You know, like a Gustavo Fring type or his example of like Khan from Star Trek 2. At least I think that's his example. He probably doesn't edit his own videos. Someone else is probably choosing all these actual references. That's the reference we were given. And that, that seems fitting enough. And then there are characters that have, they don't express much anger at all. They don't really show that much aggression. They're very like live and let live. Maybe they, they you know, if there's, if there's something that absolutely calls for it, they might show it, but that's that's about it. They're not going to fly off the handle for any reason, control, controlled or otherwise. They're just going to be very cool and level-headed. You can literally find those three archetypes at any point in cinematic history. Like, so there's uh, Dirty Harry. He's a hothead, but he keeps it controlled for the most part, you know? Sometimes it spirals a little out of control, but like for the most part, he's that controlled anger, you know? But then you have something like um, uh, the, the Travis Bickle from Taxi Driver, who cannot control his anger, who just is, you know, he's going to wild out. He's losing fucking control. He's spiraling on the edge. And then you have a character uh, like, I don't know, Luke Skywalker, for example. You never see Luke get super pissed in the first Star Wars movie. You know, he gets sad sometimes, but he never really reacts. You never see a moment of Luke enraged until Jedi, really. And, and by then, the rage was so justified. But, like, he wasn't a character that was, by his nature, prone to anger. So, you know, you can go from any era of cinema, any decade, any time frame, probably even any year, and find characters in the media that have different relationships towards anger because they're all different characters, you know? So the idea that, like, this cinematic convention of the character that has like controlled anger that that's somehow vanished from uh cinema like it, no it hasn't <laughs> like it just simply has not they're less likely to admit to personal weaknesses insecurity and emotional fragility or complain about physical discomfort and danger in writing terms wouldn't do what about the batman from last you literally one of the examples you showed as this is a girly man, but like, once again, looking at the Batman from last year, that was a character that took immense physical damage and still, and like, he was also dealing with emotional fucking issues, but like he was controlling his anger, I guess, to some extent, he was unleashing it on the criminals of Gotham. But other than that, he was keeping it under wraps. So I don't know. I mean, it just seems like your idea that these conventions have vanished just doesn't, I mean, like, how many times can I just look at what you're saying and be like, that's just not true? Like, I wish that we could move past a not true premise and you could state an opinion and then we could have an argument about it. But instead, I just keep being, you keep putting forth false premise after false premise. Like, 
here's a lie. Here's a lie. Here's a lie. It's like, what am I going to do with that? Other than just point out it's a lie, but that's such boring shit. I'm now, I've gotten to the point now where I'm critiquing critical drinker in through the context of, is he worthy of me responding to him? And unfortunately, like, like with so many other videos, the answer is no. Because he's not putting forth an argument. He's just putting forth a bunch of fake premises. And of course, anyone can fucking make a good argument based on lies. Oh, man, they don't do this anymore. Yeah, they do. Oh, man, you don't see these kind of movies anymore. Yeah, you do. Oh, man, shut up. You're ba- what you're basically trying to do is just give voice to like a vague sense of dissatisfaction that exists out there in the zeitgeist. And the reason that it exists out there in the zeitgeist is simply because there's a bunch of dudes right around our age range like 30s and shit that are just mad that the culture has kind of moved on from the shit they liked. And now they're just really upset and throwing a fucking uh, tantrum about it. Like maybe just stop being a pussy about different beliefs or different values. Like Hollywood shit doesn't really reflect my values either, but I don't just bitch about it. Non fucking stop. I find the things that actually do suit me a little bit. I watch those. And then when I watch the other stuff, I just, Take it as entertainment value. I don't fucking sit there wringing my hands. Oh my God, what about that message? Oh Oh my God, that sends the message about this thing. And the fucked up thing is that when literally any other group in society was doing this, looking at media and being like, oh man, I don't like the way this show portrays fat people. You were like, so what, fatty? Fuck you, shut up. Learn to fucking, do. you you, you think your offense entitles you to something? You think just because you're offended by something, we should have to change it? Fuck off, snowflake. Women are like, you know, a lot of times women are not uh, portrayed in media in a very flattering manner. Shut up, bitch. You'll take what you're given. You got Ripley from Aliens. You got your fucking, she's a badass. That's, That's fine. Fucking whiny SJW offended by everything. But now, now that the culture has shifted just a little tiny bit, and maybe me, and maybe men are, are are not being displayed in the the same flattering light that you want and are used to, it's like <laughs> I just I just never see real men on the big screen anymore, you guys. <laughs> they need to this is like you just keep putting all this shit with these fucking women, this diversity shit, inclusion and bullshit. And it's like, you know, whatever happened to big, strong, burly men, men who were stoic and tough and disciplined and, you know, all that stuff. And there was all this emotion shit now trying to get me to confront feelings I have and shit, bro. What the fuck is that, you know? And, um... And now it's like everyone is supposed to be like, oh, you poor dears. We're so sorry. Oh, no, we didn't mean to hurt your, your poor little feelings. Oh, you poor, you poor babies here. Oh, yeah, we're going to make movies for you again. Oh, yeah, it's going to be co- oh, so cool. Wow, look at that. Look at that tough man. Oh, he's so tough. So big and so tough. You like the tough man, don't you? Oh, yeah, he's a big man. Oh, look at him with his big muscles and he shoots a big gun. Wow, he's cool, huh? That's right, sport. There's your fucking movie. No. (laughs) We're going to do the same thing that we did when anyone else had these bitch-ass, whiny fucking complaints. Shut up. You don't like it? Make something better on your own. You do something better. Go out there and fucking do it yourself then. Make your own fucking entertainment. Tell your own fucking stories. I mean, credit where credit is due, the critical drinker at least has published some some books. So he actually has tried to contribute something artistically. I don't know about their quality. They sound kind of like Jason Bourne ripoff shit to me, but hey, whatever. At least he's putting out the kind of shit that he wants to see in the world. So he's not a total fucking hypocrite on this. But most of the motherfuckers in his audience that he uh, uh, caters to and panders to are because they want to complain incessantly about how the media just, it doesn't tell the kind of stories I like. It doesn't show the kind of characters I like. Well, then go fucking tell your own stories and make up your own fucking characters, you pussy. Quit fucking whining because society doesn't want to hand you every fucking goddamn thing you want on a silver fucking platter. Like, hey, sir, does this movie meet your approval? Is this manly enough for you? 
Fuck off, you pussies. You want to fucking talk about manliness? You know an attribute of manliness is, uh, especially from this classic era you idolize so much, not being a little pussy-ass bitch. Not being a little girl who, <laughs> movies don't do what I like no more. Wasn't that an attribute of manliness? Little fucking enough mental toughness to have a movie disagree with your sensibilities without you fucking crying about it for a million fucking years over an increasing gauntlet of shittier and shittier fucking videos. Done. Be a man.